Hey guys, I'm out here looking for Bigfoot. I'm trying to be quiet. Oh. Uh, you got this lesson though coming up where we talk about reasoning and logic. Fun stuff, right? So, enjoy the lesson and uh, wish me luck. If I take any pictures of Bigfoot, I'll be sure to share them with you tomorrow. Okay. This lesson is the first one that is truly all geometry. Okay, there's not really any algebra involved in any of this, so it's just all about looking at some definitions or some concepts that are strictly geometry, although if you think about them, they're kind of common sense. But then applying these ideas, at least in ways that make your brain think a little more. So... Really, geometry can be seen in some cases or as just a logic class, or at least we put a lot of logic in it. Logic meaning not just your normal solving through an equation kind of thing. So, uh, we're going to look specifically at postulates, so just basic ideas, though they don't require a proof, but relating to lines and planes, okay? The first one deals with lines, and it says through any two points, there's exactly one line. Now remember, our lines are straight. They don't curve. So this should make sense that if I've got like these two points here, A and B, that this line right here, all right, it exists whether it's drawn there or not, and it's the only line that goes through the two points A and B. Right? And then just recall, that's why we can name a line with exactly two letters. Right? That's all we need. That's all we use. Because this is the only line that would go through the points A and B. All right? Um, let's sit down here at this picture. Through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. Now, before we get into that, just kind of relate it back to the problem above. If I label these points A and B and C, there are no lines drawn between A and B. But there's a, there's one there. It still exists, even though it's not drawn. Same thing for between B and C. They didn't draw the line there, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's still there. Okay? Now, back to the concept here. Through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. Well, the key thing here is that the three points have to be non-collinear, and there have to be three of them, right? Two points are not going to be enough to determine a plane, because two points determine a line. But three points, as long as they're not in a line together, will determine a plane. Which is why, when we, you go back a couple of lessons, when we talked about naming a plane, we can name a plane using three letters. Right? I'd call that plane A, B, C. Okay, and this is the only plane that exists that goes through those three points. Okay, so it takes two, change colors here, it takes two points to determine a line, it takes three points to determine a plane, and those three points for a plane have to be non-collinear. They can't be in a line together. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that works here in just a few minutes. A um, couple other properties. If uh, kind of putting lines and planes together. If these two points, A and B, are in this plane. And I want to put a little label here kind of make a fancy letter over here in the corner. Let's call this plane X. Now oh, that just doesn't look good. Let's make it like a, a Z, right? So that's the label of that plane for that plane. If the points A and B are in that plane Z, then the entire line A B has to be in that plane. Because remember lines are straight. So this line A B is not allowed to be in the plane, then all of a sudden curve up out of it, right? That's not allowed. So, I'd say the whole line AB is in 
point Z. Right? Let's make it a fancy Z. That's about as fancy as I'm going to get. Okay, so if two points on a line are in the plane, then the entire line has to be in the plane because lines don't bend. They stay straight. Okay, the next concept is this. There's an if here, so this means two lines don't always intersect, but if they do, they intersect in exactly one point, right? These two lines are going to, they're straight, right? They're going to go in these directions that they're already going, but they're never going to come back and hit each other again, right? They don't curve. So my example for this right here, we'll call this line L, we'll call this line M, and call that point P. How I would describe the situation is lines L and M intersect at P, right? That also means like P is the point that they have in common. And the next one is kind of similar to it. What about the intersection of planes? Well, if planes intersect, it's different than lines intersecting, right? When planes intersect, and you can see I've got this green one going up and down, right? If I were able to see through it, I would have this other one, right, going back this way, right? So these two planes are coming together. Right, so you got this one going up and down. We'll call this one, um, we'll call it W, and we'll call this one Q. All right, so see how they're coming together? When they do, they come together in an entire line. All right, so let's put two points on there, A and B. So this, this line AB exists in both of these planes. So I would say the intersection, intersection of planes W and Q is the line AB, right? They don't just touch at A, they don't just touch at B. But that entire line is what they have in common. This is also an example to show you why that first or that second partial is true. You can't just have two points to determine the plane because here's two planes already that go through A and B. So you're not two points won't restrict you to one plane. Um, so let's write some descriptions here. The intersection of two planes. Well. Let's call this plane J and this one is B. Where do these two planes intersect? Well, they intersect all along this line right here. Okay. That line is the line M, so here's how I would write that. Planes J and B intersect and line M. Okay. The point of intersection of two lines. In this case, the two lines that we have here are M and L. <clears throat> so we'd write lines M and L intersect at point J. Right? See how they're crossing J, those two lines. That's the one point that they have in common. Three coplanar points. Well, that means three points that are in the same plane together. So technically, you could still do F, J, and G because they're in a line together, which means they have to be in a plane together. But let's make it interesting and say F. J and H. And what plane do they exist in? And this picture is a little confusing the way it's drawn up. Um, so I guess if I was grading this, I wouldn't really be all that picky on what you said, but I came up with both of, or all three of these points are in the plane J. <clears throat> um, and three collinear points. Collinear just means they're in a line together, so there you go. Right, A, B, and C are collinear, right? So in that case, it's F, J, and G, right? They are collinear, and they're all on that line M. So you'll have a few questions that ask you to kind of describe what's going on from a diagram.
Um, so this goes back to the, that second postulate that we talked about with planes. Why is it three non-collinear points determine a plane? Well, if you think about it, why does a cameraman have a tripod? Right? Would two legs be enough? No, because if you had two legs together, they would form a line. The shape would just fall over. Right, so just these two points down here are not enough. You need a third point over here, right? So this third point tells the camera stand which plane that it's supposed to exist in. And that way too, like if the floor's not level, if you're on a hill, if there's rocks around or whatever, it doesn't really matter where these three points are. As long as they're not in a line together, they're going to determine a stable position for that stand to exist in. Right? And imagine, too, they can't be lined up together. If I put all three legs together in a line, then it would just be like, here's my camera. Oops. Here's my camera, right? And it's on a stand. If I put all three legs together, right, in a line, then it's just going to fall over left or right, just as if it was on... Two, two stands only, or two legs only. So here's our official answer for that one. Just cut that out of the way. Three non-collinear points determine a plane, so the three points at the bottom, right, point, 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 uh, <clears throat> determine a stable plane, right, for the plane to rest in. So that's why you use a tripod. If two planes intersect, so this is kind of deductive reasoning. And what we're doing here is we're saying, we're looking at this if-then statement. Remember how we have the if part is the hypothesis, the then part is the conclusion. And when we're given some information, if it satisfies the hypothesis, then we reach the conclusion. So if we're, at, if we're dealing with a statement, if two planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. And then we're told planes R and S intersect. What do we conclude? Then planes R and S intersect in exactly one line, right? We've satisfied this hypothesis, so we've reached that conclusion. But we changed that word they, right? Because we now what know what they are. We were talking about the planes R and S. This next one through any three non-collinear points. There is exactly one plane, All right? So this is kind of like my if part. If I've got three non-collinear points, well, what does this say? W, X, and Y are non-collinear. So we satisfy the hypothesis, right? And we make this conclusion. There's exactly one plane containing them, but them is the X, Y, and, sorry, W, X, and Y. W, X, and Y. All right, that's the them. So my statement's going to reflect that we know what we're talking about specifically. So there's exactly one plane containing W, X, and Y. If we're going to name the plane, right, we would call it plane W, X, Y. So, again, just to kind of recall, deductive reasoning is where, and this is kind of the purest form. In fact, I call this like, this is really the law of detachment. Detachment. We won't really hit that again because it's not covered in the standards like it used to be, but Google that sometime if you're curious. But it basically just says, and when we have an if-then statement and it's true, then every time the hypothesis gets satisfied, like here in this one, this satisfies the hypothesis, then we have to reach the conclusion. And it also kind of says it doesn't necessarily go backwards in the opposite direction for some statements. Um, I explain the error in each statement, and this goes back to those, again, those four postulates. This one says two planes can intersect in a single point. Well, 
we have a postulate that denies that, right? It actually says, right, if planes intersect, then they have to intersect in a line. You're not going to get two planes to intersect in a single point. This next one, three points have to be collinear. We've already seen examples where they're not. So two points would have to be collinear. That goes to postulate 1, 1 through any two points. There's exactly one line, right? So like A, here's A. Here's B. They have to be on a line together because through any two points, I can find a line that goes through them. Now when you throw in the third point, right, C doesn't have to be on the line with them. So three points can be non-collinear. So that's why that's a false statement. And this one says a line is contained in exactly one plane. Um, and you would think this is true. Like if I draw a line, didn't we talk about how it has to be, the whole line has to be in a plane? Well, that's true. The problem with this is this part about exactly one plane, right? There can be multiple planes that go through one particular line. So this statement is false because... Think about if a line is an intersection of planes. Uh oh, what have I done here? Oh, there's the rest of it. All right, then it exists in each of the planes. Let's flip back real quick. All right, uh, this one right here. This line M exists in both of these planes, right? So there's not exactly one line, or sorry, exactly one plane that contains that line, right? It's actually in two different planes at the same time, so that's why that one's false. That's pretty much it for this lesson, guys. Um, let's kind of review like our basic postulates, basically. Any two points, forgot the S there, determine a line, right? That's why we use two letters to name a line, right? If it doesn't have a little label on the end, but we can use two points to name the line. Three non-collinear points to determine a plane. Remember that camera tripod, they have to be non-collinear. If you put the three points together, they're not going to represent a plane. Okay? With that said, if they're non-collinear or collinear, right, they have to be in the same plane. Because three points in general non-collinear will determine a plane and if they're not non-collinear that means they're collinear and if they're in the same line together then that means they have to be in the same plane together right so whether they're collinear or if I'm picking a B and D and they're non-collinear they still can exist or are going to exist in one plane um, then remember this, lines, if they do intersect, the intersection is always a point. That's why from now on, you probably won't see them put a dot there. If lines cross each other, we're just assuming that there is a point there because of that postulate right there. And then the last thing is that if planes intersect each other, their intersection has to be a line. Look in the room you're in right now at the intersection of one of the walls and the ceiling. That one wall and ceiling don't intersect at one particular point. They intersect along an edge. Or if you're thinking about like the side of a box. I can draw a box real quick. All right. So the top of my box. I'll shade it a different color. So the top of this box. And the right side of this box. What's their intersection? The intersection is a line, right? So if two planes intersect, they have to intersect in a line. So that's pretty much it uh, for this lesson. Um, check out the uh, HRW assignment that goes with this. Make sure you've got, uh, excuse me, make sure you check your answers to those. If you've already done it, go back and see which ones you got wrong. If you want to redo them, redo them. But that's it, guys. We'll see you in the next lesson. Hey. Man. Hey, guys. Guess what? I didn't see Bigfoot. Uh, I did hear some stuff. 
And he doesn't hear stuff in the woods at night. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. I had a lot of fun making it. And um, check in with me tomorrow and we'll see uh, what happens. Okay. Maybe I'll have a picture or two. I'm going to stay out here and camp out all night and see what I can find. Talk to you for now.